So welcome to Unthink Me. Welcome, welcome. This is uh, th- this is this is going to be an episode where we talk about the, the story that relates to everybody basically having like superpowers and kryptonite and conceptualizing it as a switch that turns off and on, making me ultimately feel very confident or very insecure. It's like confidence, self doubt, and, and a little bit of in between. Mm-hmm. Is this a three way switch or is are we on a dimmer? And how no. big is your switch? And how how if yeah. How effective is it? How much does it control your Some behavior? switches are bigger than others. Where's your switch at right now? Do you know? Do you tell others? Do, do others know? Do they know by studying you or because you tell them? Everyone that I've read, heard, listened to, seen, talks about identifying where you are on the switch and how to get out of it, not what actually flips the switch as much. Very interested in figuring out like what this thing is exactly. So <laughs> uh, I, I, I made a judgment last night under orders make a judgment figure under out orders under orders from whom my my friend was in town and i was Craig. explaining the concept of judgments and just taking a moment it, the judgment is you 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 decide that it's that you're feeling anxious or that you have too many things on your mind or something like that the overwhelm okay. anxious thing which i suffer from and you go i'm going to make a judgment a judgment okay. is you have all the information that you have right now it's not mm-hmm. complete you can't make you can't figure it out you can't decide so do it now. Okay, Make a decision. Yeah. Make a judgment. Eat that frog. Yeah, yeah. The task was explain why this, why you're like this, and I'll I'll, I'll explain it in colloquially in a moment. But uh-huh, explain uh-huh. why you're like this. So I drew a okay. map. Of, okay, okay. This is why map, you're like this. A, a frequency <laughs> map. The bigger the rectangle is, the more it's like this. I have a, a switch that I can't mm-hmm. see and I can't operate. I don't mm-hmm. know why it turns on and off. Mm-hmm. It turns me into what I call purple and green versions, or you could consider it um, when the switch is down, I feel like everything is being inflicted on me. I'm being, um, nobody wants me around. I'm not welcome anywhere. Nothing wants me. I'm this alien thing. It's just a feeling, um, right? It's not yeah. ex- external force saying you aren't welcome. It's just a feeling. The, this is something to get into how much okay. it is. All, how much the quadrants play into it, how much it's actually true as a narrative in the first place, how mm-hmm. much it's actually just a normal thing that everyone has, and I'm overanalyzing it. Yeah, these are all on the map. How much of it, yeah, there's an unknown, there's a there, there's a question mark, and there'd be monsters on it. But I ha- and the switch is down, I feel guilt and insecurity as my mm-hmm. baseline way I feel. And as I get more mature, I learn how to fake not having the switch down, even though I do. Right. When the switch is up, I, I am full of confidence and assurance. I feel welcome. I feel wanted. I feel like the things that I'm doing are meaningful and purposeful. The reason that I constantly do an art project that I'm really fascinated about, and it always switches, is that this is my way of responding to the switch flipping. <laughs> okay. So it switches up and I go, oh my God, I can do anything with my life. Everything's infinite. I, I, there's nothing wrong with me. Anything that a person could feasibly set as a goal that makes sense to do, I could do it. So cool. Let's get started right now. Let's rock. And I bring everyone in and, and everything happens. And then the switch flips off and I'm stuck here now in front of everybody saying I know anything and I don't know anything and everyone's after me and they're mad at me because I can't figure it out. And I'm I'm just at the mercy of this fucking switch. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and um, so I'm trying to bring insight to it, like to understand what it is, whether I should be thinking about it and dissecting it and and what to do about it you know Mm -hmm. what factors are actually is it external factors internal factors self-thought factors is it like habits and practices that i can do to change you know like prescribe things for it judgments are huge making judgments regularly i think a lot of it is um, being indecisive and having a lot of ambiguity about things it's important here when you're in ego looking towards psyche and hoping to get more in the psyche to know that a lot of what causes your fundamental motives and and drives is invisible to you. It's just mm-hmm. a, you're like I don't know why I'm doing this, mm-hmm. and now you're you're like playing detective on why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good place. You want to be there rather than um, 
not even just knowing lost. that you're doing yeah. shit uh, and just having people. I think the first one is where people are telling you like, mm, you're kind of doing this. And you're like, no, I'm not. Fuck you. Like that's, <laughs> that's square one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and then you start going, oh, I kind of am doing that. But I also don't want to hate myself for how I am. So I'm going to little by little become aware of this as I become more conf- confident at not doing it. And hopefully I'll sneak right into not being like an incredibly anxious being all the time. <laughs> um, but what's new, so that's my whole life. I mean, I'm talking 12 years old, I remember this stuff. Mm-hmm. That, that it seems like most people, their switch doesn't move as far as mine. And some people, it moves way farther than me and they get like intense. They, they get in trouble. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's risky. <clears throat> intense, intense, both ways. Mine doesn't go that far. I don't become like a problem. I become a problem to myself. I become mm-hmm. like slightly like, oh God, now we're doing this. But it's all just this like <laughs> game between these two versions of me. But what's new is that I'm, I seem to be aware of it. I, at any moment I know, like, where's the switch? I didn't mm-hmm. used to know, but now it's like plain as day. I can't not see it. It's like, oh, okay. There's, there's where we're at right now. I'm just trying to understand what makes that switch flip. What makes that switch flip? You know, <laughs> boy, if you find out it's yeah. number one, bestseller, anything well, we're working on it, we're working on it. Any books I've read or, or podcasts I've listened to or motivational speakers, they're all how to get out of it. Well, so the, the like imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. When, yeah. when you're, when you're in a situation, either you entered it with the switch flipped in the wrong direction or the, you know, anti-productive direction and how to get out of it. Nobody really touches on a whole lot about what's actually flipping the switch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, we've, I, Interesting. I, okay. I think the the listeners and I can agree we've all been there. Y- yeah. I, I can think, uh, you know, count on both hands, the amount of times that I was aware that when I entered a situation, the switch was one way or the other. And then yeah. mid situation, like realizing that there's been a change that the yeah, switch yeah. flipped one way or yeah. another mid, mid hangout, mid barbecue, mid meeting, mid whatever. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't have, of course. And I now have I have answer. to, that's, and this is what's <laughs> happening. Yeah. And I, and I'm looking, I'm like, okay, what, why did that switch flip at that time? What mm-hmm. caused that? Yeah. The goal is just to get to the point where I'm a little better at damage control on the purple mm-hmm. atom, on the shadow atom, on the negative mm-hmm. atom, where it's like, I, I can hold them in the balance. And honestly, if you ask me in the abstract, I trust positive Adam. It's, it's not a mm-hmm. thing where they're both equally true. It's a thing where I don't have enough energy to think properly sometimes. <laughs> and so when I don't have energy, I go, remember when you had energy, all the things that you believed and thought and felt, it's like that stuff is pretty damn true to you. That didn't change at all. You've just felt some self doubt crept in. Yeah. I think that's from what it feels somewhere. Like. Yeah. And, Negative, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this when I talk about third tier experiences. Negative thoughts and emotions are like pee in a swimming pool or cream and coffee. It, the only way to keep it out is to not let it in. Once it's in, oh boy, cool. you almost have to hard reset a new cup of coffee because once it's in there, it's in there. And really the only way you can do is flushing it out with, with the good. Yeah, that's what that in my experience, that's it. I, I can count. For example, I was at Cousin Cody's once for um, one of his uh, famous. Uh, I'm going to cook a, like a Thanksgiving meal in June. Anybody who wants to come can come. Classic Cousin Cody, like the mother <laughs> hen thing. Well, OK, so I went over there and it was me and like three other people right at first, like trickling in acquaintances through cousin Cody enough that we had hung out a few times and you know, I'm helping out. I'm, I'm helping prep. I'm help, helping set disposable, uh, plates, silverware out. And I'm like having a good time. And I'm, I'm even like singing. And, uh, then some people I don't know come over, but are still part of that other friend group and everyone welcomes them. And like, oh yeah, this is, this is our, this is our friend, James. Like, oh yeah. Self-doubt immediately. Like they're probably cooler than I am. 
I know that for a fact because I know Cousin Cody. Uh, and you, and then, you become less fluent. You become less, you mm -hmm. don't feel like, you know, like, uh, what do I say? Like, uh, everything I do is yeah. wrong. They were not intentionally, by any means, trying to ostracize me a bit. I did it to myself because yes, yes. as soon as the first like inside joke came out from between them that I w I was unaware of, I was like, "Am I? Should I be here? Like hanging? Uh, what if more people show up that I don't know? And then it then it's like ten against one instead of instead of like three <laughs> against three. At that moment, I realized that was happening. What happened? I, I ostracized myself, ate a little bit, and it, it, well, it, it was fun. And left hours before everyone else. Um, I didn't fix the situation. I didn't do what could yeah. be the right thing, but that I did recognize in that moment, like that's, that's kind of the that's the through through line a bit. Is is you're not you're, you. You can, I could sit here and hear that and then come back with like all these techniques, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, here's how you get out of that. Like you were saying, but exactly. to start with, just it's easy to write that book, admit that it's happening, <laughs> admit that it bothers you, admit that you to be in the group. I mean, this is, this is the personality reaction. This is like mm -hmm. the stage one reaction is like, okay, these guys don't like me. So I don't like them either. So I'm not, I'm going to sit awkwardly apart from them and not participate while they do their thing, secretly wishing I was a part of it because like nobody, mm -hmm. nobody's going to, you know, I tried to get in, they, they, they bop me a little bit and I go, I go mm. so what do I do with that? Oh, I'm going to try harder. I'll get you. I'll mm -hmm. win you over. Oh boy. That's not, Maybe. You know, I, I'm going to be defeatist most of the time. I'm going to be like, mm -hmm. okay, so these guys are douchebags. What can I do with my time in this room with these people? and them suffocating my existence. You know, that's that's not a very good solution to that. And the, and the reality of the situation is they're not douchebags. No. They're just no, they're no. just being them. It's it's all internal. I mean, if 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 the situation were different and they were douchebags, like, oh, okay. Then then either I leave or I alpha male and then try to try to win the crowd over that way. But in these situations where it's it's that internal switch it's not even good versus evil. It's uh, good versus uh, evil within yourself. It's not the, it's, there's not a dichotomy to the situation. It's all in your head. Charismatic people that you want to like flock to and spend more time with ease that switch from happening within yourself. Like I don't, I, I I'm no expert on the topic, but they know some way of like muting that switch in others, and then it's like, oh yeah, this this person's kind of like the ego nurturing. Um, they they make it so that you don't have self doubt. They they equalize themselves with you right away. They should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they never will too. They those no, are the ones no, no. who don't want to share this with you. Yeah, yet. they're busy being cool. They're busy it's, being awesome to everybody. Whatever is really important to you about yourself is going to have maximum and minimum points. Like maybe your mm -hmm. physical energy is really important. Maybe your emotional happiness is really important. In my case, I think it comes down a lot to like mental clarity versus haziness. That's kind of what okay. this way, like when I feel hazy, then everything's overwhelming and I, and I can't keep things in order and I'm an idiot and everyone hates me. When it's on, I'm, I'm like, on to, okay, I'm ready for you. I got this, like I'm engaging with it. So that's kind of what my switch feels like. In terms of like vulnerability, right? By seeing my switch and being vulnerable with myself and by opening communication about this switch concept, I expose like a weakness about myself and it's really kind of one of my, what I conceptualize as one of my primary weaknesses, getting more comfortable being vulnerable with your ultimate kryptonite, you know, with your, with your weakness. The mm -hmm. other, the opposite side is as you gain more visibility of it yourself, as you're more aware of it, you get better at hiding it too. You could, you get better Fake at faking it you make it. not yeah. having the negative. Yeah. And, and I mean, you do want to, it's, it's not, inauthentic it's being who you want to project mm -hmm. authentically honestly legitimately and getting better and better at at because you're paying attention what is it like when i'm switched on what is it like when i'm switched off how does that feel how do i act can i act am i a good actor when i'm hazy and negative can i fake being how i am when i'm not so that that's a pretty damn handy tool if you're going to be spending half your time in a low place mm-hmm and, but you don't want that to be your actual self-concept. I mean, be real with yourself about how you feel. Just project onto the world what you want to project, you know. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. tough because they're opposites. There, there's honesty and vulnerability and, like, 
doing what you're acting. trying to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, acting, 100%. <laughs> yeah, like a, a good actor isn't always being completely honest about how they actually feel in real life. They're trying to find a sort of bridge between those two things. When negative outcomes occur in my life, I blame the switch. I think the switch is like the best explanation for why negative outcomes occur in my life. Uh, and so I want to both gain mastery of it and also get better at hiding it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I think I wanna, those are I, one and the same. I want to genuinely look better and I want to put on makeup. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> why do I keep trying out different art forms that like aren't really realistic when I start and then become more and more realistic. And then at the point when they are realistic, I stop doing it and start doing something else. And you know, how does that relate to like codependency in relationships? How does that relate to spirituality and states of consciousness, awful stuff? That's, that's like the kind of the focus of my narrative at this time, as far as like the narrative thing goes, the two characters that I seem to have to be, at any given time it's it's there's a i don't know if there i don't know if there is a middle i think it's on a way in a direction every every vacation you've ever gone on you were the you were there you know it's kind of like like mm -hmm. i can only speak from the person who has this thing and maybe you and i both have it now we're talking like i understand what you're saying people have a general they'll lean towards if i'm feeling a little positive okay i'm having a good day i'm having a bad day if i'm feeling mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. little on the negative so switch you know cramming it all into one thing and calling it a switch and saying it's up or down dualism. Uh, it's just, just the a language. Story. Yeah. Yeah. In the relative, I think that what's, yeah, the extremes and the rapidness is kind of what makes a person diagnosable mm -hmm. <laughs> with, with, the, with having like a big switch, a big switch. And the speed of it going is what's recognizable. If it was going slowly, you probably wouldn't notice until yeah. you've already left the party. Like, Oh, yep. I actually was having a good time at first. I don't know what happened, but I, I just wanted to go. So big, big amplitude to the wave, fast frequency that mm -hmm. makes it noticeable. It's loud. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it is, you know, it, I'm not just like copping out. Like, I think it's both the best and worst thing about me. It's, it's my superpower in kryptonite, you know, this switch in my mental narrative. <laughs> It seems to propel me into all the things that I do that are of interest to me and that I value. And it also seems to prevent me from all the things mm -hmm. that I value. And yeah. So that's the switch. That's, that's what I pitch is like, as I, I mean, I made like a, a video that I was super embarrassed to release. And then I did where I kind of, it, I lay this out in, in like emotional terms, relationships and jobs and art projects, having a lot of energy, getting into a stagnant phase, becoming less interesting, switching to a different one a sort mm -hmm. of splitting on a soul level with reality itself. I don't stick to things. I don't commit to things. And then I don't get excellent at those things. I'm a learner type. I, I am only happy when I'm learning in real life. Like I, mm -hmm. I really am not happy if I go a long time and I'm not learning anything. I get less and less happy. So that sucks though, because things in life don't need you to learn a lot of information rapidly in an immersive way. You would think that would be the whole game, but it's like, no, nah, mostly they need you to be solid on something, you know, just be solid on a thing and keep doing it. <laughs> it's just not really my nature. That, yeah, that's not the philosopher's stone type way, but that yeah. that's how the American life goes. Yeah, we, orange meat pragmatism. We yeah. don't want you to be good at it. This isn't the Middle Ages where you need to be good at a bunch of things Expert uh, in order. Yeah, in order to to do things. It, what what we need from you is to keep the machine working, which means you need to be a shape and you need to fit into that place yeah. uh, to keep things going. And that might just be the job you have keeps you going to get the bills paid that you have. Uh, which keeps you from getting uh, depressed uh, by being evicted or going hungry or whatever. There aren't a ton of jobs that need you to be multifaceted in a, in no. a, in a myriad of ways. They, they need you to maybe one or two, three, four. Uh, if, if it's a really satisfying job, five, six. Uh, but yeah, probably not, not a, a hundred things. It's almost like in the orange meme um, actualization of potential, you kind of have like the lower and the higher, like the, the lower is just getting competent at something 
to the point where you can be the person who does it. That can be your role in an organization. And that's all anyone wants from you. But what you want from yourself generally as Orange Beam is you want to find that role that that covers all the bases that you cover. You want to find the thing that optimizes for the kind of person that you are. So it's like you get in the role and then from there, you're trying to sneak in, you're trying to get your way from there to a more optimized um, actualization of your potential. And what I'm trying to do is shortcut all that. And it doesn't, it doesn't work very well. You know, like I just want to There's no cheat codes to life. Yeah. (laughs) But because orange meme is just one of 12 perspectives, I'm okay with not, destroying the orange meme game you know I, and i feel you know, very no confident need. i feel very confident that i can fill a role and that it'll be it, it won't generate maximal happiness or contentment but it's certainly a capability the american dream is is the picket fence 2.5 children two cars in the driveway um a job that you can work 40 hours a week that pays for all of those things that that that's not orange to me. Yeah, like that's not my understanding of orange, but uh, that's you, you got to do what you got to do. Landing on a job that you're actually like satisfied with. I I haven't looked at a Gallup poll lately on it, but I would <laughs> imagine most people are not actually satisfied with their that job. They feel. just do it because it's tolerable, and it gets the bills paid to their to their level of comfort, whatever that may be. And there's some degree, I mean, yeah, like, I think that was important what you said. There's some degree of like self-convincing or other convincing. It's like, you have to cut straight to like, okay, but like, really, is this job making this person like, is this fulfilling them? Right. I, I, I yeah. need to, I need to go on a, on an extravagant out of country vacation every year. Otherwise I'll lose my mind where, <laughs> where someone so else is yeah. like, yeah, you know, as long as I have like three hots and a cot, I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so those people probably have jobs that reflect that and that they may still be unhappy with those. So there is some self-convincing. Maybe to reflect what you were saying earlier, it might be more the Amber meme thing to just like get into a role, settle down, you know, and be miserable, you know, tolerate your job. And then the orange meme is more about actualizing your higher potentials, even if they're kind of, it's only a mild effect. Maybe, Maybe it's more like that. I've always been a a little jealous and I don't mind saying it, but I I worked in the restaurant industry for 16 years. Head chefs, sous chefs, executive chefs, not a lot of them are genuinely happy people. No, (laughs) I I wasn't. That's why I got out of it. But you get to the dishwashers and the scullery Mm. crew and bussers. And it's like a lot of them are, (laughs) you know, this is their first job. They're like, 16 17 years old they don't Mm -hmm. know shit about fuck my man but the ones that are like 30 and up that are still doing those jobs like oh yeah i I just do this job for the little bit of money so i can ride my bike all day yeah this is this is the other thing i do uh and and it affords me what i actually do which is rock climbing or or you know hiking and camping i just need enough money to do that so this is yeah this is great I, I think that's where you're. I get to talk that's to where you guys. You're green, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I it it affords me my level of comfort, and what actually brings me joy in life. This isn't it, but it's tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> where, yeah, as a head chef, I was like, this is not what I want to be doing. It affords me what I wanted to do in life, if it also afforded me the time to do that. Um, and so, all of that money that I could have spent on time off fishing or or camping or hiking doing those things there you can't get the time off if you're gone the ship doesn't go and so that money ends up going to drugs and alcohol and and ways to cope eating your feel yeah you're just coping with being so miserable at the thing that's supposed to be affording you the ability to do the things that you want to do that'll build you up keep that switch toggled up um in in the society we're in, and I'm not dogging it in any way, you kind of just have to pick something, and you it, hopefully you can either convince yourself into liking it, or you like it enough that it's not a chore. That's I don't think that's a common thing. I think most no. people are tolerating their jobs just to pay the bills, which they may yeah. also just be tolerating. Yeah, and that matches up pretty well with like the amber meme and orange meme like frequencies. I think those are kind of the worldview of them. There's a lot of tolerating going on. Not always fully. There's just 
some amount. And I think as you get into more green meme values, you're more interested in the joy of life. And it's like, okay, I have to cover my member bases in order to afford the joy of my life. Tolerance versus acceptance. Yeah. Tolerance is the dirtiest word I could ever think of. Yeah. And um, it, it, it often gets associated with like other people. The umbrella of tolerance was something that George W came out with in schools. And it was this whole initiative of the umbrella of tolerance. Tolerance has a breaking point. If you're miserable in your job and you're tolerating it, you're going to freak out. You're going to be depressed. That switch is going to go down. If you accept that this job affords the things I want to do, or this task or this art affords me the things that I want to do and the acceptance of it, um, it acceptance doesn't have a breaking point. It's infinite. Yeah. Tolerance is like, well, you know, the, the, the sapling can tolerate so much wind before it <laughs> snaps. We actually say like, what is the tolerance of, uh, of rope? What's it's, what's it's like break strength or whatever it is. Tolerance is, is terrible. Either yeah. accept it or don't do it. Yeah. Well, I think it's funny, I, just as you're saying that, and I'm thinking of tolerance, I'm thinking like the history of the word, and, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, tolerance of, of diversity. It's like, we're not just That's here to fucking thing. tolerate each other. <laughs> like, that, yeah, that, I didn't want to, I didn't want to put such a fine your point bullshit. in, but like, yeah, yeah. racial tolerance is yeah. like, what a horrible thing. Like, yeah. you know, I don't like it, but I'm gonna put up with it. Like, what? <laughs> racial tolerance. Yeah, yeah. I, that was what I was saying. Yeah. Um, I was and, I was tiptoeing yeah. around it, but yeah, that's that's kind of what we're beat into through the history books is tolerating each other. Way of tolerance, the acceptance. Happiness. Yeah, switch down, you're tolerating things. Switch up, yeah. you're accepting things. Oh, you bet, you bet. 